this type of terrorism is called racial terrorism. There is a street in, in Cleveland on Tr Tremont Street in West 12th Street where over the last two years there seems to be a racial terrorist involved in manipulating and scaring and terrorizing certain people that live on that block. Now this particular area in um, Cleveland is mixed with Eastern European, older East Europeans, it's Puerto Rican, it's black, and you know, in white. And it seems to be an area which has pretty much gotten along with each other. The races have gotten along with each other. So all of a sudden, in uh, June of 2007, we have two fires. One happened June 30th and one happened June 31st. There was one woman who, who um, was a, a mom with four kids. Her house was uh, actually uh, set on fire. Actually, the garage was, and the landlady downstairs, daughter, barely got her car out of the garage was on fire. Luckily, a newspaper delivery person was coming by as this happened at 4 o'clock in the morning, and he banged on the door to alert them, and they were able to get out safely. The next thing that happened in this situation was on July 31st, 2007, there's another woman that's a single mom raising her daughter and her niece. And she wakes up because she hears some type of crackling sound. She steps out onto her porch uh, and there's a burning white shirt there. Next thing you know, the porch is up in flames and the house is a total loss. She got burned out. And there has been, had been racist graffiti written and posted on, you know, certain areas of the neighborhood. A rock, for example, or in a garage that, that actually is set on fire. And now we come up to up, up to to date where there's the a fourth letter has been issued out to this man and uh, and his family indicating that they better get out or they're gonna be burned out within thirty days. Now the preface is there was another fire. There was a third fire. Uh, a councilman in the area who had been standing up for the people's rights, rights to live in this particular area, his house was burned down. Okay, and it was firebomb, as they would say. So, uh, the councilman house was firebomb in July of 2008. And, um, you know, he had a seven year, a month, he had a seven day old daughter in the house with him and his wife, and they were able to get out, but the house was, a, you know, a loss. So, I'm just going to read to you what the, the last letter, because FBI now is involved in the situation. This has happened about, about February 6th. FBI is involved in this, and I'm going to read this information out to you, and we're going to show you the pictures. Okay, now, the letter uh, stated, get out in 30 days or burn out. And it was signed with white power and swastika insignias. The letter went on to state, the house next door to your house was my first work, and also I broke into your garage. Get out, nigga, or burn out, 30 days. Okay, now they, they did have a return address on the envelope, and they went to the person's home, and it said uh, it was uh, uh, Tom's Cabin was the name of the person that was listed on there, and then when they went to the house, it was uh, a, a, a returning um, veteran for Iraq and they did some hand sampling tests and things like that and it wasn't in his handwriting and he said he didn't know anything about it the FBI is involved again you know this is the third time or the fourth time that this type of threats have gone out and you know when they don't have enough concern about burning down a, a councilman's house who happened to be white a white councilman the, the two women in the house were burned were, were black and the gentleman that received the third, uh, the, the last note, excuse me, was black. And he wouldn't even come on camera to even show his face. But he talked about how he was going to have his kids sleep in a, uh, next to the door and huddle in the room. Uh, so that they'd be able to get out in case there was a fire. And this just, for a, just harkens back to the days where, you know, we had to fear and cow for our lives when... Somebody who didn't like the color of our skin decided they wanted to do something about it. And you have this happening in modern day Cleveland. In the year 2009, this quote unquote, again, here we go, post-racial America. And you have this type of foolishness going on. Now, we're, we're busy 
spending our time talking about Chris Brown and, and Rihanna, yet this is an important story that's gone over the last two years and yet didn't seem to get any type of airplay on national news. And this is important, because this is mid-America. Remember, they, they kept talking about mid-America and how important mid-America was? Well, this is mid-America. This is Cleveland, the, the home of rock and roll, okay? And you have people that can't even live in a neighborhood without being threatened with racial terrorism, which is exactly what it is. They firebombed the city councilman's house. What more do they have to do before the national press shines its light on this particular incident? Stop worrying about what happened with Chris Brown and Rihanna and look at what's going on with everyday people's lives. Not that that story is not important, but this is more important. Because this speaks to the level of ignorance and hate and violence that exists in this country. And that still exists regardless of if the president is black or not. And we need to stop living in this fantasy world thinking that everything is perfect and wonderful and we've achieved this dream. People want the same dream that everyone else has. The right to live in a neighborhood that's safe and protected. And they shouldn't have to fear from fire. Fear from hate. Fear from violence. And if you don't know anything about it, go online and read about it. This is the fourth threat. Three have been carried out. And this is the fourth one, and the national press, again, is asleep at the wheel. Because this doesn't matter to them. This doesn't matter to them.